Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of Saturday Night Horror. I'm your host, Master of Ceremonies if you will. Go by the name of Big Beefcake. <laughs> and for those of you who aren't familiar with this, since it is a new series, uh, Saturday Night Horror is a tradition of mine I've had for years upon years. Um, basically, instead of going out to a club and getting wasted, what I do on Saturday nights is I cook some good food, get something to drink, and I watch horror movies. And I figured uh, it'd be kind of cool to make a little video series on it, show you guys, give you a little sneak peek if you will. So right now the format is, um, you know, I'll do my little intro, show you what I'm watching, and then I'll cook some food, show you, uh, show you a little bit of that process, and uh, show you some clips of the movies I'm watching. Now unfortunately, I'm not the only one in the house, so I can't turn the TV up real loud to get the audio from the clips. Um, I guess that's a good thing. You know, I don't want to get hit with a copyright claim. So what I do is for the clips, I do a voiceover, tell you what's going on what I think about them. So yeah man, so, um, I have fun with it. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it too. So let's get on to episode 2. <clears throat> now, this week, I watched two movies I haven't seen in a while. Um, 28 days later, 28 weeks later. I don't want to say they're zo uh, zombie films. Um, basically it's there's uh, something called a rage virus, and once you get infected with it, you turn homicidal. You just you just lose control, and uh, your blood infects other people. If their blood gets on you anywhere, if you bite somebody, they're infected with the rage virus, and so forth and so forth. So you kind of see how the outbreak happens. Uh, first movie we're gonna do tonight is 28 Days Later. That starts the whole thing. Um, rage virus originates from that, and you kind of see how. Uh, how the world first reacts to it is kind of, uh, like I said, the first 28 days of the virus and 28 days after it takes effect. Uh, the next one after that, 28 weeks later. In that movie, the rage virus has been contained, or, you know, so they think. And, um, let's just get right to it, man. I don't like to give away the plot or what happens in the movies. I don't like to spoil it for you. I'll give you a little, you know, a little explanation on what's going on. Not too much. But uh, before we get started, 28 days later, we're going to cook. Now, as you can see, it's not dark yet. It's about 8 a.m., so in about uh, 14, 15 hours from now, I'll start cooking. It'll only be a few seconds, a few minutes for you. <laughs> but yeah, tonight we're going to be making burritos, so um, should turn out good, man. So let's get to cooking. Alright everyone, so here we have the ingredients from the burritos I'll be making. Um, when it comes to burritos, I'm a, bit of, I'm a bit of a plain Jane, you know. I like the meat, cheese, lettuce, salsa, occasionally some refried beans. But tonight we just have the lettuce, cheese, four cheese Mexican, you got to have it, man. Of course, paste, chunky salsa. Now these burrito shells, I didn't realize it when I bought it at the time, but they were the grandes. And we're going to go up here and get the taco seasoning mix. And all the Taco Bell brand, man, so Taco Bell brand it is. And like I said, I did not realize those shells were the huge ones. So, uh, should be interesting. <laughs> but yeah, that's it, man. And this is Tiger. We have four cats. He's the only boy. Poor guy. All right, the pan is heated up, and we're going to put this meat in. Now, this is one pound of hamburger or beef, whatever you want to call it. And what I'm doing now is I'm just chopping the meat, and I chop it the entire time I'm cooking. I chop it up and down, left and right. And the reason I do that is because I want the meat to be in small pieces. I don't want huge chunks of meat. I want it to be small, so I'm constantly chopping this meat the whole time it's cooking. Now, even when I flip it over to cook the other side, I'm still chopping it. I mean, it doesn't look like much now, but, um, oh, it's going to be wonderful. And like I said, just keep chopping it. And by the time I'm done, it'll be tiny pieces of meat. It won't be huge chunks. Which I don't really like huge chunks, man. And we'll just keep chopping it like this. See the smoke coming up forward. It's cooking nicely. 
Now this is going to be a lot of grease in this pan. We'll have to dump it out when it's done, but let me cook it for a while and be right back. Okay, so as you can see, most of the meat is cooked. I uh, still got a little bit left. And like I said, you know, constantly chopping this meat. And you see a lot of grease built up in the pan. We'll drain that out when all the meat is cooked. You definitely don't want to have the grease still in there. But yeah, just keep chopping the meat up, flipping it over, chopping it some more. This is going to be really good when it's done, guys. <laughs> Another thing, the cats kind of like to jump on the counter and I don't... I don't know why, but they try to go up to the pan while I'm cooking, so I'm constantly keeping an eye out for them, too. But yeah, this meat's almost done. Alright, so now we're going to make the taco seasoning mix. You just need three, cu three quarters of a cup of water. Put in the taco seasoning here. Well, yeah, put in the taco seasoning. <laughs> Alright. And we're just going to stir this up. And on, you can smell the seasoning, man. You can smell it. It smells delicious. And we'll just give that a nice stir there. That should do it. And we're just going to pour this into the meat. Kind of pour it around in a circular motion there. And we're just going to keep chopping, like I said, constantly chopping this meat, uh, flipping the meat over, stirring it up. I want My goal is to get all the meat covered in this taco seasoning. So I'm just constantly chopping, you know, just moving it around, flipping it over. Just trying to get all the meat covered in that taco seasoning. So we want all the meat to have flavor to it. And I said it smells really good too. And just keep flipping and chopping. And you can see the meat is in tiny little pieces now from all that chopping. That's how I like it. And we'll just keep going. I said, want all this meat covered. Now we're just going to let it kind of simmer in that seasoning for a little while. It won't take too long. I just want to just let it simmer in there until all the seasoning is cooked into the meat. I said, it shouldn't take too long, and it's smelling great, guys. All right, so that is done. Um, see there, there's only a tiny little bit of seasoning left, but that's fine. Uh, most of it's cooked into the meat. So we're going to call that meat done, guys. Look at that. Yes, sir, that is done. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and get it off the burner here. Turn the oven off first. Or stove, excuse me. Take it off the burner. Yeah, we'll come over here, and there's Kitty. She's my favorite. Now with this lettuce, what I like to do is this very top layer, I like to peel this off. I mean, it's, it's always been a habit of mine, just peel that top layer off. Uh, if I can get to it. Just peel that top layer off and start with what's underneath. Alright. Good enough. Now most people just put their meat and cheese in the shell and roll it up. I do it a little different. I like to mix my meat, cheese, and all the ingredients on a separate plate. And then put it all in the shell once it's mixed up. So, uh, we're going to be generous today, man. 
And don't get me wrong, I'm still on my weight loss journey, but Saturday nights are my cheat nights. And tonight is Saturday night. <laughs> I'm going to do one more scoop. So we'll make two burritos here, so this is definitely enough. Especially with those shells being so big. There's our meat. And we're going to come over here, we're going to add the cheese to it. Four cheese Mexican Sargento. And you have to be generous with the cheese, man. A generous portion of cheese. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and do the chunky salsa. Brand new, never opened yet. There we go. Gotta be a little generous with this. And keep in mind, this isn't on going on one burrito, so I know people are thinking, oh my god, what a fat ass. <laughs> well, there we go. Now, what I do here is I put it in the microwave, get the spoon out for when I mix it up. I like to put it in the microwave, melt the cheese before I mix it all up. So we're going to go over here to the microwave. And there's Kitty again. She's ready for the movie. Aww. Just put it in the microwave. Ah! Demon eyes. About a minute and a half should do it. Alright. Now it's done. That looks good, man. Now we're just going to mix everything up. And I actually woke someone up that just came in here and asked me what I was doing. So I smelled that from back in the other end of the house. Oh, good. <laughs> We're going to mix this up real good. And keep in mind, I'm holding the phone with one hand, trying to mix with the other. Here we go. It's all mixed up. We put it on the shell. Now we're going to do the lettuce. There's our lettuce. That looks awesome. Roll it up. All right, we got two burritos. Now, what I want to do is I usually put it. Uh, blah, 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 wow, <laughs> put a little bit of salsa on top of the burrito, like so. Then sprinkle some cheese on top of that. Nothing fancy. All right, we've got our cheese on it. Now, what I'll do is I'll put this in the microwave. Hello, tiger, and kitty. We'll put this in the microwave one more time just to melt the cheese on top. And there we go. That is it, man. Those look delicious. They smell delicious. I tell you, man, my mouth is watering. And we're going to go in the fridge and get something to drink here. Old Reliable, ice cold Coke. Also has some Juicy Juice Cherry. And this is dinner. Burritos and ice cold Coke. Now all we need is a movie. Let me go ahead and try some of this burrito first. I'm going to be a punk and use a fork. <laughs> it's kind of hard to cut one-handed. Mm, 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 mm. So I took a bite of that burrito. That is good. The seasoning really just puts it over the top. And then the salsa mixed in. And there we have Kitty licking her butt crack. It's just what we want to see when we're eating. <laughs> Alright, so let's go watch this movie, man.
Alright, so our first movie is 28 Days Later. Now, this is just the title screen here. Looking forward to this, man. Haven't seen this in a while. Alright, we've got dinner and a movie. The only thing left is to turn off the last light in the house. There we go. Now we're ready. Alright, so in this scene, well, our main character here, he, uh, he just woke up in the hospital. Don't know how long he was out, if he was in a coma, if he was just unconscious or what. But he walked around the hospital to find it completely abandoned. And now he's gone outside into the city. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on. <clears throat> uh, the city is pretty much abandoned, so he's kind of walking around trying to figure out, you know, what the hell's going on. I th Honestly, I think that would kind of freak anyone out. I'd love it, though. <laughs> the uh, city is just completely abandoned. Uh, he has no clue about the outbreak of the rage virus, so, uh, yep. He has no clue what's going on in the world right now. Of course, car alarm went off. Look at that. <laughs> the end is extremely fucking nigh. Now, if that isn't a warning, I don't know what is. <laughs> Poor guy. Right now, he's going upstairs into the church he was in. And it's a bunch of dead bodies. Well, some of them are uh, infected, but he doesn't know that yet. And he makes the mistake of saying hello. Look at that. There's bodies everywhere. And there's the infected. <laughs> now, if they would have popped up like that, I would have been gone. I'm sorry, I would have hauled ass out of that damn church. And apparently, my phone's screwing up while I was recording again. Ugh. And we have a father, a pastor, priest, whatever you want to call it. He's infected with the rage virus. <laughs> now, I'm sorry. Uh, he's a better man than I am because I would haul ass. You would have seen Beefcake running down the stairs out the front door, brother. And all the all the infected in there just going after him. Well, that's a scary sight right there, man. Mm-hmm. Saw that, right? Some survivors telling him to follow them. See, they're throwing molotovs at the infected, trying to help him out and get him out of there. Which, I mean, you don't know if you can really trust them or not, but at this point, being chased by basically zombies, we'll say, uh, I think I'd take my chances with the guys throwing the Molotovs. Now, this is pretty cool right here. Blows up the whole gas station just to kill those few infected. That is badass.
I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, you gotta think that that's got the attention of other infected, and they're probably on their way now. I mean, I would think. I don't know. Look at that. Now, in this scene, he's gone back to his parents' house. He wanted to see if his parents were still there, and... I believe it's his parents. He said his family, so I'm assuming his parents. I don't know. And there they are. <clears throat> so he just found out his family is dead. And he said he took a bunch of pills and alcohol, so suicide it was. Now you can't really see because of the glare, but they wrote a suicide note. This is they're sleeping with they're sleeping and they're begging him not to wake up. Alright, once again I'm joined by Kitty. Uh we have four cats. She was the first one I got. She was the smallest cat in the store. <laughs> uh they had all the little kittens in their their little pen or whatever. And she was the smallest one. And she was off in the corner by herself like she was scared to death, so I felt sorry for her, man. I had to get her and take her home, and I love her to death, man. She's my favorite cat. She's always out here with me watching movies, usually sitting in my lap being a big old baby. <laughs> but I love her to death. All right, this scene right here, he's uh getting attacked by the infected. This scene was really loud, too, man. I had to cut the volume down real bad. It's one of the survivors you saw earlier throwing the Molotov to come to his rescue. There's actually two survivors with him. There's the other one. Now, unfortunately, one of the survivors gets bitten, and uh, they kill him immediately because the rage virus immediately infects you. Now in this scene, they met up with another survivor and his daughter, and they received they're hearing a transmission on a radio advertising a safe zone, and so they actually got in the guy's car and they're on their way. Uh, they decided to drive through a tunnel here, and as you can see, they're going to have a little bit of fun with it. See the focus on the phone is really bad. Uh, for this scene. Yeah, they're just having fun, man. Driving over whatever it is they're driving over. And he just blew his tire. So you know what that means. Alright, they're trying to change the tire and they see a swarm of rats running. And one of them realizes that the reason the rats are running is because they're running from the infected. Yes, they are. So now they're trying to change the tire before the herd or swarm or horde of infected reaches them. God, I couldn't find the right word for that. I'd be screwed, man. Either that or I'd be like Shane on The Walking Dead and shoot someone. Make them my Otis. <laughs> and the whole time they're trying to change his tire, the infector just closing in on him. Yeah, surprisingly, they get it changed before Infected can uh, grab them. Now, they do make it to the car. And they got lucky in that scene, man. Then he has a nerve to kind of tell them to piss off. 
He didn't say piss off. He said something else. I want to keep it family friendly for YouTube. I don't want them to get me. <laughs> All right. This final clip I'm going to show you here. They're driving towards a huge, uh, I want to say it was Manchester. Now, you can't really tell from this angle because of the glare on the f on the phone. It sucks, but they show the city skyline, and it's all on fire. Smoke and fire everywhere. The whole city is burning. And they're driving right towards it because that's where the uh, radio transmission saying the safe zone was. All right, now we'll do some clips for 28 weeks later. Uh, this is the first major action seen in 28 weeks later. It's it's going to be kind of lengthy. <laughs> There's a bunch of survivors living in a house. Uh, looks like it's in the middle of the country, in the middle of nowhere. And the infected have found them. And now she's infected. Now she just threw up blood all over him, so now he's infected. There's two people inside the house infected, plus whoever's outside. Now if you recognize, uh, they just showed him. I cannot remember his name, that guy there. He's best known for playing Rumble Stiltskin on Once Upon a Time. This is actually a really good show. I haven't seen the season finale yet, so uh, no spoilers, please, for all the Once Upon a Time fans out there. Now, they're all trying to get away from the effect now. Now that woman there is uh, his wife. I don't know his name. I can't remember his name in the movie. We'll call him Rummel Stiltskin. <laughs> That's all. Uh, all Rumpel's wife. Now the infected from the outside are getting into the house. Like I said, I wish I could record the actual audio for this, but you know, I'm not the only person in the house, so I gotta keep it low. And the camera's screwing up again. Awesome. Huh, that's weird. And now it's going in fast forward. Wow. That's what you get when you still have a Galaxy S5. Now, old Rumpelstiltskin left his wife to die. Uh, he could have saved her from the infected or gotten away by himself. He chose to run away like a coward. Which, honestly, man, I don't know if I'd, uh... I probably, I might have done the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so he left his, he left his wife there to die, man. And now he's running for his life. And they got her. Damn, Rumple. Now I want you to see how many infected are chasing them. You got those in the back. Those behind them. And that whole group coming from the side. And those groups are going to meet up and form one huge group just coming after them. I'll give it to him though, man. He's, uh, he's hauling ass, brother. Look at him. A track and field champion. <laughs> That's one of the other survivors from the house. Got themselves a boat. Speedboat. I guess it was a speedboat. I don't know. And he just got dragged into the water. Now is Rumpel going to save him? 
or take off. Well, he tried to save him. Uh, he couldn't do it. He put forth more to effort trying to save that guy than he did his own wife. Now he's taking off from the boat. He's got one of the infected hanging on the boat with him. They just got cut up by the blades, motor blades. And he is home free. Yeah, I would have definitely been screwed in that situation. Because now it's sinking in that he left his wife there to die. Alright, now in this scene we skip ahead. Um, they're actually, we're back in Britain where the original rage virus took place. If you notice that woman on the stretcher, that is his wife. Surprise, surprise, she didn't die. She got infected, but not like normal people. And uh, he went to go see her. He actually wanted to, I, th I believe he wanted to kill her so she wouldn't tell his kids that he left her. And she did something to him to get him infected. Hello, tiger. Now he's infected with the rage virus. And this is going to be a brutal scene, so if you're squeamish, turn away. And uh, basically he kills his wife in a horrible, gruesome, disgusting fashion. Really? <laughs> the phone camera screwed up. Are you serious? Oh, Jesus Christ. Basically, he gouges her eyes out. And now the guards finally show up and he's killing them. Or well, not killing them, but he's biting them, infecting them. Now, this whole thing uh, is in a military, is in a facility where they're bringing people back to kind of repatriate Britain. And it's under military watch. So they're all in the same area, and he's infecting the guards. So basically, the rage virus is back in this uh, contained area. And this is uh, everyone trying to get out. It's a whole group of people. I think they're underground trying to go through the tunnels, the staircases to get out of the building, or out of the area while he's chasing them down. The infected are everywhere. Yeah, they had, they had no, and that's old Rumble Stiltskin's son right there. So those people had no chance. There you see Hawkeye from the Avengers, old Jeremy Renner. Now in this scene, the infected and non-infected are just running everywhere, and the soldiers have been ordered to shoot everyone on the ground because they can't tell who's who. And you know, Jeremy Renner is kind of struggling with that. But yeah, they've been ordered. They said, uh, shoot everyone on the ground. So, as you can see, he's really just trying to find the effect and shoot them. Oh, Hawkeye himself. Now, the other guards, they don't give two dilly shits, man. They're shooting everyone on the ground. Now this is the coolest scene in the whole movie. Um, they've gotten away from the uh, from the uh, military area, and this dude in the helicopter, you recognize him as Michael from Lost. He's been in some other movies. I can't remember his real name either. I'm sorry. There's a field full of infected coming after the survivors, and uh, <laughs> this is awesome, man. 
he's going to take his helicopter and he's going to cut them up with a helicopter blade. He, it's like he's got a weed eater and the effector of the weeds. Look at this. Here we go. Mm, that is beautiful, man. That is an awesome scene. That's my favorite scene in the entire movie right here. That is badass. Alright guys, that's going to do it for 28 weeks later. Give you my reviews in a second. Alright everyone, that was 28 days later and 28 weeks later. Let me give you my quick review or slash opinion of these movies. Now in one of my earlier horror Blu-ray pickup videos, I said I didn't remember a whole lot about these movies. I just remember that I really enjoyed them. Uh, after watching it again, I'm going to have to kind of change my stance on 28 Days Later. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad movie. I'm not saying that at all. It's just, uh, you know, the first half of the movie was awesome. Dealing with the rage virus, people, the infected. I loved it, man. Trying to hide from, get away from the city, trying to hide from them. The second half of the movie, you're dealing with uh, non-infected, just normal humans, and that kind of... It was kind of boring, honestly. So the first half of the movie had a whole lot of promise, and the second half of the movie was just a huge letdown. It's, um, I mean, it's kind of like going to bed with Jessica Alba, and then you wake up next to Richard Simmons. That's the best way I can put it, man. It starts great, ends horribly. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, man. I, I can't give it a thumbs up. I can't give it a thumbs down. So uh, we're going to give it the indecisive thumb. <laughs> I just made that up, so yeah. Cornball sense of humor. But yeah, man, I, I can't I can't give it a thumbs up or a thumbs first half of the movie gets thumbs up, second half of the movie gets thumbs down. How about that? Now twenty eight weeks later, um I think I enjoyed this more than twenty eight days later. I just like seeing how was, uh how everything worked, how they thought they were safe, they thought the virus was eradicated and it wasn't. So a lot more action in 28 weeks later. Um, I enjoyed it a whole lot more, man. It's uh, definitely worth a watch. I give 28 weeks later a beefcake thumbs up. So that's my review for these. Like I said, I don't do long, drawn out, drawn out reviews, man. I can't talk for that long without stumbling over my words and going off track. But I hope you enjoyed it, man. I hope you enjoyed episode two. I definitely enjoy bringing it to you. And uh, <laughs> now that I look at it. That burrito meat looked a whole lot better in person. It, it turned out, it, it kind of looked nasty on camera, but trust me, it was delicious. I don't know what I'm making next week for episode 3. I'm kind of leaning towards stuffed peppers. I've never made stuffed peppers before, but I'm kind of leaning towards trying that out for the first time next week. We'll see. That's not 100% uh, guarantee. And as for the movies for next week, we have two that I haven't seen in a while. So it'll be good to catch up on them again, watch them all over. First one we have is Virus with Jamie Lee Curtis. Now the only thing I remember about this movie is they were on a ship in the middle of the ocean and something is on the ship and I believe it evolves over time. It keeps getting smarter and more deadlier. Or deadlier. Would it be more deadly? I don't know. Yeah, that's about all I can remember for this movie. So this will be our first movie we'll watch next week. Definitely looking forward to it. Second movie is kind of cheesy but if you know me I don't mind cheese on my horror movies I haven't seen this in a while but I know it was hilarious in a good way <laughs> it's one of those so bad it's good movies and it's Jack Frost um, a murderer get turns into a killer snowman and really that's all that needs to be said <laughs> so first movie watches virus second movie watches Jack Frost possibly cooking stuffed peppers don't know yet but I hope you join me for uh, next week's episode, man. Like I said, uh, this is my Saturday night tradition. I love it. It's the highlight of my week. And I hope you guys enjoy it, too. So until next episode, next episode, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Thank you for your support. Take it easy, guys.